Hi everybody, welcome to a new project. You will have seen the walkthrough by now, on the flip through, um, but we are making a pretty big mini album using this gorgeous collection called Autumn Splendor from Simple Stories. I have um, two, one, um, Nick, what I have, I have two of the collections of the paper, 12 by 12. I have um, the frames, which I don't have here to show you. I have both of the ephemera packs. I have the chipboards. And I also have the eight, six by eight paper pad that I'm using. So that's everything that I have. I am using Craft Artisan cardstock um, from Country Craft Creations. It's gonna take a fair bit because it's such a big album. And I'm also using green artisan cardstock, and I may incorporate some linen and some burgundy, um, but you'll see as we go along. And you will have seen the flip through, so you'll know if I used them in the end. I know I used the green because I've already cut some, but I haven't decided yet on the other colors. But that's where we're at. So let me tell you how to make these base pages. There is a cutting guide, as always, free. Um, which you can download from my blog and I'll link it. Um, but for these you're going to need four pieces eight by eight and you're going to need four pieces eight by nine. All right so right off the bat you've used eight sheets of cardstock um, but save your scraps because you know, you'll probably be able to use them. So I want you to take the nine inch piece, place the top edge along your scoreboard, score it at a half inch, and then just, uh, I'm using tape because it's um, fast for me to demonstrate with tape, but you can use glue if you prefer. Um, if I'm using white glue, I use art glitter glue, but you can use the adhesive of your choice. And then I'm just trimming the corners. I'm not going past my score mark. I'm going to make a video showing how to make these pages because essentially I use the same pages almost all the time. I have like two different choices of pages that I typically make. And I should just make a video how to make the pages so I don't have to show you in every video. Kind of what we did for the covers. Speaking of which, this is going to be an 8.5 by 8.5 cover with a 2.5 inch spine, I think. That's where I'm leaning it away. You'll see. It'll be in the cutting guide. Okay, so uh, I think I'll start down at this corner. So you want to peel back the back of your tape just a little bit. Take the corner of the smaller piece and line it up with the corner of the larger piece that you've just done. And then you want to line up that bottom edge, make sure it's nice and even, and then pull the tape, okay? And then this edge should be much easier because you've just lined everything up already at the other end, but everything's not always perfectly square, so you still want to be careful. So you want to make four of those and you have an opening at each end. One for the hinge system and one for your side pocket inserts. And I've not picked out mats for most of the pages. I have one mat picked out just because I needed it for size. So let me bring over, let's start with this page. And let's move that out. Okay, so this is going to be the first page. This is going to be, what is this? I just drew a blank. I think it's supposed to be a pocket, but it doesn't look like it's the right size for a pocket, so we shall see. Double check. I'm drawing a blank now what I was going to do. Oh, I know. Okay, hang on. I think this is a pocket, and I cut it a little small, but it'll be fine for me. And you can 
I'll give you the correct measurements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one flap going this way and another flap, which you can say I scored it wrong, um, going this way. And actually, let me think, I'm going to put this one underneath. Okay. And you can see they're not a full height of the page, so you'll have a little bit showing. And I'm going to use this to mat this. All right, so you'll, you've already seen it, so you know what I'm doing. Okay, let's get started. Again, this is going to be the pocket, and that's going to go in second. And let me give you a measurement. I used scraps, so it's four by, I cut mine eight and a half. You want to cut yours nine, four by nine. And I'm going to make note of that. All right, and then the flaps, you're going to need two that are seven and a half by seven. You want to put the seven and a half inch side along the top and score it a half inch. Okay, is that right? Yeah. So seven inch side along the top, score it a half inch. This size was determined by this mat, which I cut um, from here. And I'll give you the mat measurements when we glue them down, but I used this for that. Let me go ahead and tape these. All right, I'm using 3 8 inch score tape. As you can see, I'm opening a new roll. And Go ahead and mat this one before I put it in just to make my life a little bit easier. And I've cut this dark green out of let's see, it's the artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations, not a sponsored post, um, but that's where I get it. Okay, seven and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I've had people ask me the weight on the artisan cardstock, and I'm never really sure, but I noticed it's actually mentioned on the site, and I think it's 80 pound. And I am using art glitter glue to put down my mat. is I didn't get out any baby wipes just to dry for the start of this project. I think I might have one. Let me see. Yep, I have one left that I didn't use in my last project. Okay. Like that. And then this one goes like that. And I cut this one six by seven. And I'm going to ink that. And let's see, I think. Do I want to use. Let's see. I 
think I'm going to use vintage photo. Yeah, the vintage photo is definitely the one. Okay. And this is the Distress Oxide vintage photo. Super heavily, but a little more heavily than I have in some others. Just think it looks nice with this paper. That's nice. I'm gonna use a magnet with this, I think. Well, I don't know why I say think. I'm definitely using a magnet. My concern is that pocket. And I'll explain what I mean in a minute. top to bottom um, here. Ooh, look at that. Bent to my page. Um, so you just want to center it. You've only got about a quarter inch top and bottom to play with. here right and this flap is going to go here so when I put down the magnet everything is going to be just fine however once you start putting all kinds of stuff in the pocket that may cause some problems in terms of keeping this flap closed I don't want to tie though because I don't want to interfere with this design so what I may do is put the magnet here. Or what we could do is put the magnet on the front of the pocket down here. I think that's what we're going to do. Okay. So I just had to think that through. I hope you could see what I was talking about just down here a little bit. Um, I'm concerned about putting the magnet here because I'm going to have all kinds of stuff in the pocket. I'm going to have this flat. So I'm going to put the magnet on the front of the pocket. Okay, made up my mind there. Now, you need to make sure when you're putting this second um, piece down that it's lined up perfectly with the first one. Otherwise, it will not look nice. two flaps and you can say I scored this one on the wrong side but that won't be visible once the mat is down all right get some of that out of the way now let's do this pocket Giving you the measurement for the pocket already. 
you're going to score both short ends and one long end at half inch. You should be able to get this pocket out of one of the scraps that's left over from your cutting of your base pages. And you'll see that I'm going to be scoring mine at a quarter inch because I cut my piece a half inch too short. And this book is already using more than enough paper, so I'm not going to cut another one. Okay. And let's go ahead. Use a little skinny quarter inch tape for these side pieces that I cut wrong. Did I say quarter? It's eighth. This is eighth inch tape. over so I can see where I'm going to trim these corners as well. Like that. Okay. fit here. Make sure this is going to fit. The time to find out it's not going to fit is not when you've already got the adhesive on it. If you're using wet adhesive. Now see, the mine's a little bit long right there. Okay, so let's fix that. So I am going to add another score line. It's coming in a little bit. Trimming my corner to accommodate that new score line. Let's see. Perfect. Okay. And I need a little more tape since I need that wider. Probably could have used a quarter inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is peel back this tape and adhere the bottom piece to the outside. Gives you a little bit more room in your pocket and prevents too much, too many things catching. Okay, so then on this side, pull back a little bit. Start at this corner. And you don't want to put this past your score line of your flap or your flap won't close. Better to have this pocket a hair small, which is what mine is, than big. Because you want these flaps to close properly. Right, there's that. And we need to pull these off. Okay, that one's going 
to go that way. That one's going to go that way. And then we're going to do a magnet somewhere in this neighborhood. Which we probably ought to do now. Otherwise, I'm liable to forget it. Okay. So let's see. Let's move that out of the way. I'm going to put this one right about there. Well, it's going to be covered. I did not mean to use a piece of tape quite that large. Okay. Grab the scrap. I had a comment suggesting that rather than putting the tape here and then trying to peel off the back, which I always struggle with, to just put the tape here, fold it over, and let it stick. The problem that I'm having with trying that is it's going to leave a lot of exposed tape, you know, where I am not entirely sure where this magnet's going to end up. And since I'm not ready to mat yet, I would end up with sticky tape just sitting there. So I didn't want to do that. But I like the idea. I just need to figure out a method to make it work. And actually, if I would just bother to use the tools at my disposal, I probably would not have any trouble. See, that came right up. Okay. So move this flap out of your way. Move this one over. A good stick. There we go. Okay, so let's put that there. Let's fold that over. And that is not bad, but I feel like I want it stuck down a little more. However, I just don't see, I mean, I could do one up here to the back. I just, like I said, I feel like once I start putting things in the pocket, it'll be irrelevant. So I'm not gonna fuss with it for now. I'm gonna leave it right now. This page, I am, let's see. I know what I'm gonna do, but I think I need to pick out mats before I can do it. Well, we can put down the flap. All right. So what I have here is one of these beautiful frames that's part of the collection. Uh, like I said, I want to have something behind it, so I need to choose mats. Um, and then I have a full page flap that's going to cover it. So when you turn the page, uh, you'll just see the flap and then it will lift up and you will see the frame inside. So for the flap, you need a piece eight by eight and a half. Yeah. And you want to put the eight inch side here across the, oh, the, excuse me, wait, 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 is that right? Yeah, the eight and a half inch side across the top. Oops, almost gave you the wrong thing. Eight and a half inch side across the top and score oops, at half inch. scissors there. Oh, there's the ruler. All right. I really love the frames that Simple Stories has, but I hardly have ever used them. Sometimes I've even had them and not used them because my books tend to be smaller. Uh, so in this case, did I just fold that the wrong way? I did. Um, thinking about those things. Um, I decided to make sure I could accommodate at least a few of them in this book because they're so pretty. All right, so we're just going to put that right along the top. Yeah, that's fine. Just fill back a little bit. 
line that right up along the top edge. There we go. That. And this may be another situation where we have magnet issues because we're going to have quite a bit of bulk there. So, question becomes do we want to use another mechanism to hold this closed, such as a tie or something like that. So I think we're going to have to decide on that a little later. I'm leaning towards seam binding or something of the like. Or, you know what might be pretty? Is maybe bring up a band of some sort with a magnet to hold it closed. That might be pretty. So we might do something like that. What I'm going to do is grab my pencil and write closure so I don't forget to do it. That'll be covered by Manny. Okay, so there we have our first page, part of our second page. The third page we can't do yet because it's going to also have one of those frames and I need to pick a background. So I'm going to set that aside as well for the moment. That's going to go there. So that'll be here. And this is just going to have this really pretty frame and maybe some other decoration. But essentially, that's going to be page three. All right, page four. Let's set aside that page. All right. And let's set that aside. Okay. So this page. I'm trying to work with the scraps that I had left over. Um, but this is not actually going to be the one I use because I need to. Um, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to have two flaps that don't meet in the middle. So there's a gap. And then in between, I'm thinking of doing a belly band. I think I'll do, which I need to cut. This is, I just have that as a placeholder. But I have a lot of pieces like this left over from when I was cutting everything else. So this needs to be nine. Okay, so this is eight inches tall, so you need to be an inch taller. So nine by, let's see, how wide do we want this to be? You don't want it to be super wide but I don't want it to be a little skinny belly band either. Maybe three inches. That'll give us some room to do some decorating on it. Yeah, let's cut that three inches. Nine by three. All right, so the belly band you want to score each of the short ends at a half inch. Okay. And check that for fit. That'll be all right. Okay. And then you want to score each of these pieces. Do I give you? I don't think I gave you measurements. But they'll be in the cutting guide. Four by eight. There's two of them. And just put the four-inch side along the top. Score at half inch. Whoops. Goodness, I'm not scoring very well. I might do with these. I think I might want to round these corners. Let's bring this back. So that's going to go there with something quite decorative on it to sort of peek through. This is going to go here, and this is going to go here. Okay. 
and I'm going to do a closure between them that I need to decide on. And I was thinking maybe grommets on either side or eyelets and then just a tie. Or we could do what I've done before, which is make a tag of some sort and just have it attached with a magnet and that will hold it closed. Could even be something that goes that way. I kind of like that sort of puzzly look of doing that. It could even be a, like a belt. Um, that might be pretty too. That would give you a whole lot going on on this page, but I'm not opposed to that. I really like the look of something that size right in the middle, but I also like the idea of a belt. We could do both. You know what else? Hang on. I'm pulling out the chipboards to see what we have. Look at that. Well, that would certainly work, wouldn't it? Looks like it's just the one sheet. Okay. We're going to play with this. I feel like until I know what I'm putting, it may be difficult, but what I'm thinking, okay, let me clarify this so that you know where I'm going. Okay, let's have this here. When I say a belt, what I mean is instead of, you know, like a belly band like this just goes all the way across. A belt, you have two pieces that attach in the middle or attach at some point along the way so that they open up. At least that's what I call a belt. And what I'm thinking is doing a belt, and this could attach to one side of that belt, almost like a buckle. I'm sorry, I'm being very uh, wordy about that. Okay, so what I would need for that, I don't even care about the length, because I can fuss with the length later. You'll find it in the cutting guide. I'm thinking a one and three quarter inch wide belt. All right, hang on. I just took a 12 inch strip that was one and three quarters inches wide and cut it in half. Like I said, it's definitely going to be too long. And then if that goes like that, okay, so now we have our flaps, we have our overlapping belt, and then we have our buckle like that. Oh yeah, honestly. I almost want to redo this page on a Christmas album. How adorable would that be with Santa's buckle like that? You may see an encore of this page, but for now, this is what we're going to do. Refer to the cutting guide. All right, and this is literally a scrap that I've scrapped, but I like the size. It may change because we may use something from the chipboards. We may use a cut apart, but I need these belt pieces because they need to go on underneath these flaps. Okay. Let's do this thing. Okay. Let's start with the belly band. We are going to add some tape. that's going to 
go there. Check in the fit. Okay. I'm good. Now, this page is eight inches. This band is three. So that means it's going to be two and a half inches on either side of the band for it to be centered. Normally, I would eyeball all this, as you well know, but I do want this to look. Good. <laughs> Not that they don't always look good, but I feel like in this case, precision may be necessary. Yikes. Okay. So I'll just move that. And you know what I could do? Let's just make a tick mark. Well, I don't really need to. I was going to say make a tick mark with a pencil, but I don't really need to. I just need to put the... I've got my... Amazing, easy to read ruler that I adore. Put that there. Put that there. There we go. Okay. And then it should just fall at the two and a half up here, and it does. I like it when things work out the way they're supposed to. Okay. So there's the belly band. Okay. Now let's look at these belt pieces. We don't need them to overlap as much as they are. Let's score them so I don't forget about it. I think I mentioned to you in my previous videos, if you're watching, that I switched, or was about to switch to a evening shift. And I started that yesterday and it is so nice to have my mornings free. Uh, to be able to do crafting because I'm not a night person. And um, I just felt like I wasn't being terribly productive because I come home from work, have dinner and not want to do a thing. I'd get up in the morning raring to go and dying to do crafting, but I couldn't because I had to get ready for work. So we'll see how this goes, but I think I'm going to like it. Plus, I think I've also mentioned I'm getting my house ready to put it on the market. So there's a lot involved with that, and it's nice to be home for a chunk of the day to have appointments and do things about that. I'm not looking forward to moving, but I definitely want that process just done and over with. Okay, so let's... These are too long. That's why I'm not giving you measurements. Um, but I just want to get an idea how they look so I can decide on the, the length I actually want. I don't want to... I mean, I want, I want a fair bit of overlap because I'm probably going to use two magnets. So I want you to cut these one and three quarters, one and three quarters by five and a half. Let me make that measurement. Right. So I cut them six. So I'm not taking very much off because, I, like I said, I want to leave enough room for um, maybe two magnets. So the center of this is at four inches, 
and the center of this is seven eighths. Okay. Okay. Is that centered? I feel like it is. Okay, so let me see if you can tell what I've done. I've got my ruler here. The four inches is the center mark. So in order to center this band on that, I just need to put the top edge at three and an eighth. Okay. And again, you could eyeball this. You do not need to measure it as how many times have you seen me? I eyeball almost always. Um, I just felt like in this case, I wanted to be a little more precise. Okay, there's that one. And this one. Now, inside that, we are going to put these flaps. Stick that there for now. And We may end up rounding the corners on these, but for now I'm going to leave them. Okay, and then these, let's fold these back, are going to go right here. Okay, just like so. You may want to put them in just a hair so the band can go over, but we left the band nice and long so you shouldn't have any problem. bump there because this band is in there, but that's fine. You're going to cover that. Again, you always want to check for fit before you start attaching down. decided yet exactly how this band is going to go, but that's going to go there, which is going to be so cute. And again, I mean, this would be absolutely adorable on a Christmas album, this page. All right, so if you're planning a Christmas album, red, black, gold buckle, white, so cute. All right. All right. I think that we will call that a stop. I'm trying to make these videos a little shorter. Um, and I'll be back next time and we'll continue making our pages. So thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, on the little end screen that's coming up, you'll see some other videos recommended for you. And I hope I see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.